Hey everyone and welcome, Stephanie Wong here and I am super excited to join forces with our Google GDE and cloud champion, Sam Witteveen. Hi Stephanie, great to be here. Thanks, Sam. So you and I have both been really excited about this explosion online about Gemini 2.0 for a good reason. It's not just another model, but people are buzzing about its ability to understand and respond to text, images, audio, and video all at once. And so today we're diving deep into Gemini 2.0 and the Gen AI SDK. This combination is huge for those of you looking to build with Gemini, and we are here to break it down for you. Absolutely. We've been building a whole bunch of different kinds of multimodal apps, agents, a variety of different things with this new Gemini 2.0 SDK. Exactly. And that's where this Gen AI SDK comes in. It gives you a really simple and easy way to integrate Gemini into your applications. And so if you're used to playing around with it in AI Studio, you can use this Gen AI SDK to seamlessly migrate your production ready apps to Vertex AI without rewriting your code. That's right. Let's jump into Colab and show people how they can get started. Okay, so the new Gen AI SDK makes it much easier now for us to use Gemini on Vertex. You've probably seen some code like this for using it with AI Studio. All we need to do for using it on Vertex is basically authenticate as a Google Cloud user, set our project and region, and then we can just come in and initialize the SDK with the flag vertex AI equals true. Pass in the project, pass in our location, and then we can use Gemini on vertex AI. And to check that, we can basically come in here and get a list of all the models that we've got access to. So here you can see I'm getting a list of all the models and then I'm filtering them by Gemini 2.0 in the model name. All right, so once we've got our authentication set up, it's really easy to just come in here and do a standard generate text query. So you can see here, all I'm doing is passing in the model that I'm going to use. The contents of my text input in here, and I'll get an output back that's actually already formatted in Markdown, so I can just print this out in Markdown to look at it. Now, if I wanna do something a little bit more complicated and we wanna set some of the generation configs, we can also do that really easily like this here. So this is just the same as our previous example, because see now we're setting the temperature, We've got our top P, we've got our top K that we're going to sample from. We can set things like the max output tokens in here. All of our settings for configuring our generation are now being passed into the client and we get them back with the response. Now, if you want to set up a chat with Gemini where it will handle the memory going back and forth of the conversation, we can set it up like this. So you can see that we're setting up our system prompt in this case. We're going to pass that into the config. And we're going to pass in a temperature in there as well. And then once we've set it up with this client.chats.create, it's very easy for us to just send a message like this and get a response back. So you can see here, I'm asking the alien on Mars, what's it like on Mars? So it will give us a full response there. But then I ask it, is there a fast food restaurant there? So we get a response. And then just to check that it's actually sort of monitoring our history and getting this whole conversation in, I can then ask it, Oh, I forgot what we were talking about. And straight away, it's able to respond with what our conversation has basically had over multiple turns in here. Now, if we want to do multimodal calls, this is quite easy too. One of the simplest ways to do this is if we've loaded the image locally, we can actually pass that in with our prompt. So you can see here, we're using the models.generate content again. We're passing in a list of contents now where we've got the image first up, which we've loaded in, and then we've got our prompt. Write me a description of everything in the image, include the text. And you can see we're printing out the image, and then we're printing out the text. And you can see it's done a pretty nice job of being able to OCR the text that was in the image and give us a description of what that's about in the image. Awesome. Well, there is so much more you can do, like JSON mode, code execution, and even grounding. Hang on a minute, Stephanie. Let's save some of those things for the next video. All right, all right. You're right. But if you can't wait, then go ahead and check out the collab in the description to try it out. But before we head out, let's quickly cover some differences between AI Studio and Vertex AI. So AI Studio is great for experimentation and prototyping, while Vertex AI is a little more robust and scalable for those production-ready AI apps. 
Exactly. With Vertex AI, you get enterprise-grade features like Gen AI eval service, RAG engine, uh, explainability, enhanced security, scalability, even things like cost optimization. It's the perfect environment for deploying and managing your Gemini powered apps. Yep, and these features make Vertex AI the ideal platform for building and deploying more sophisticated AI solutions. All right, well, that does it for today. So go ahead and start exploring Gemini 2.0 and the Gen AI SDK. Head over to the links in the description to get started.